Out of all the PC components, these three have the most misinformation. Processor, graphics card, and motherboard. In this video, I'll focus on correcting the common myths about these three. If this video gets enough likes, I'll dive into other PC components and debunk more myths in a series. So, if you have your notepad ready, let's get started. Myth 1. Air cooling became outdated and is bad at cooling. Liquid cooling is better. Answer. Certainly wrong. This is probably one of the most widespread myths about PC components. Liquid coolers aren't always the most effective cooling type. Air cooling is a more suitable and higher performance solution, especially for entry-level and mid-level coolers. Due to their nature, liquid cooling is more likely to create issues. There are users who prefer air cooling just for this reason alone. The notion that it's outdated is completely wrong too. High-end air cooling gives better performance than most liquid cooling. Make sure to know that. Myth 2. The amount of VRAM on the graphics card is very important. Answer. Both true and false. If your aim is to play games in resolutions 1440p and up, these days most graphics cards can deliver a smooth experience. The first thing that will affect your performance here is the amount of VRAM. As the resolution increases, VRAM usage ramps up. Due to this, if you want to play games in 1440p without any issues, you need to go with a graphics card that has at least 10 to 12 gigabytes of VRAM. It's also important to mention this. It is a big mistake to pick a graphics card based on the amount of VRAM alone. The raw power of the graphics card is important too. You can find the best graphics card for your budget by looking at graphics card comparisons. Myth 3. I can apply the undervolt and overclock settings of people who have the same processor as me. Answer. Wrong. For you to be able to understand why not, I need to tell you about the quality of silicon used in processors. You can think of the silicon like a tray. When processors are being manufactured, this tray gets split into multiple parts and processors will be made using these parts. The middle part of this tray is better in quality. Because of this, if your processor's silicon was taken from the middle part, you might have more flexibility in terms of overclocking and undervolting. This way you can make more extreme adjustments when overclocking and undervolting. You might think of it like this. For example, if your processor has high quality silicon, at a certain voltage you can get speeds up to 5.3 gigahertz. If it has bad quality silicon with the same voltage, you might only get as high as 5.2 gigahertz. So you need to adjust your settings by trial and error without taking any risks. Though for an average user who wouldn't overclock or undervolt, the silicon quality doesn't mean much. The processor will go up to the specified speeds regardless. Myth 4. A powerful processor and a weak graphics card cannot be used together. For you to understand it better, let's change it up to this. An RTX 4060 and an i7-14700KF cannot be used together. Answer. Both true and false. If you're building the PC solely for gaming, this wouldn't be an ideal decision, but it can still be used. As the processor would support the graphics card well, you can get the maximum performance from your graphics card while gaming. In fact, if the only games you play are competitive games in low resolution, this can make a bit more sense. As the game resolution decreases, the processor is utilized more. So this can be a sensible decision for Valorant and CS2 players who prefer lower resolutions. But considering that most people don't exclusively play these games as mentioned, this would be a nonsensical decision. Additionally, there are some programs that, like the need for processor performance, also require graphics card performance to support the processor. Because of this, it always makes more sense to buy PC components that are balanced and that can support each other well. For this, you can use websites that calculate bottlenecks. Myth 5. As the resolution increases, the processor usage will rise. Answer. Wrong. I've mentioned this in Myth 2. As the resolution increases, the graphics card usage will rise, not the processor usage. Thanks to this, the processor can support the graphics card better. For example, the Ryzen 5 5600 with the 4070 Ti can get bottlenecked when you try to play games in 1080p resolution. But when the resolution is raised to 1440p, as some of the load shifts to the graphics card, the processor can support it better. This way, the bottleneck can be reduced. By the way, let me share a little piece of information with you. You can see that some gaming tests performed on newly released processors are being made in 720p or 1080p resolutions. Of course, this isn't because the reviewer only has a 720p monitor. These tests are being done this way because more strain is put on the processor as the resolution decreases. This way, the performance of the processor can be tested better. Myth 6. The more expensive processor will always perform better. Answer. Wrong. 
This completely depends on the usage case for the processor. Some programs can perform differently between Intel and AMD processors due to the way they work or due to the processor architecture. You must know this. Besides this, something else that you must know is that processors are better in some areas than other areas. For example, most Ryzen processors with X3D in their names perform really good in games due to the cache advantage, but they cannot perform as well in other use cases such as 3D rendering. In this case, you must find the most efficient processor for your use case. Besides this, there can be vast differences in temperatures of processors with similar performance. For example, the R5-7600X and R5-7600 show similar performance, but the 7600X tends to get hotter. To add to this, the Ryzen X3D processors are pretty good when it comes to temperatures too, despite also having great gaming performance. Myth 7. Graphics cards from brands like MSI and ASUS perform better. Answer, false. Brands take the GPU from manufacturers like Nvidia and AMD, then sell it after customizing stuff such as the card's cooling. Due to this, the GPU is the same across all RTX 4060 cards. There can be differences between the graphics cards of brands like ASUS and MSI in terms of cooling performance, design, factory clock speeds, material quality, noise levels, and the presence of coil line. Listing them all like this might have worried you a little, but the brand is not that important. Unless the card you're planning to buy has any widespread issues or is from a no-name brand, you won't have any issues. Just don't unnecessarily spend more money. A card like the RTX 4060 doesn't really run hot anyways. You don't need to go with an expensive card with special cooling. I have tier list videos about this. If you're interested, you can find it on my channel. Myth 8. Bottlenecks harm PC components. Answer. Wrong. In forums and YouTube videos, it said that bottlenecks harm PC components. In contrary to what's said, you don't need to worry. Bottlenecks do not cause damage on the components. And especially if the bottleneck amount is around 5 to 10%, it's hardly noticeable to begin with. If the bottleneck amount is 15% or higher, you might get upset as you couldn't get your money's worth on the graphics card. But besides this, there is nothing to be worried about. Myth 9. The most popular graphics card is the best. Answer. Both true and false. As the best-selling graphics card manufacturer today is NVIDIA, things get a bit complicated. I need to explain this in a bit more detail. While some graphics cards have good performance in gaming, some may have more performance in other use cases, such as video editing. And video cards give better performance compared to its competitors in areas of video editing and artificial intelligence, thanks to CUDA and Tensor RT. Of course, the performance is better, but the price can be higher than its competitors too. On the other hand, in terms of raw performance, AMD graphics cards have better performance compared to their competitors, meaning it provides a good hardware performance without features like DLSS and frame gen. This makes AMD graphics cards the better option for games like Valorant and CS2, which don't support DLSS. Also, in some countries, AMD graphics cards are really cheap compared to NVIDIA graphics cards. Due to this, you must pick your graphics card for your specific use case instead of just picking the most popular option. Actually, it might be a good idea to make a separate video about this. Myth 10. VRM and VRAM are two different things. Answer. True. These two terms get mixed up often, so I wanted to explain this. VRM is the circuit that relays the power that the processor needs to the processor. The higher phase and ampere rating the circuit has, the more stable and complete it can deliver the required power. If the processor doesn't receive the required power, there will be losses in performance. Similarly, this is important for overclocking enthusiasts too. This isn't important in entry to middle tier motherboards, but having a good VRM lets the PC run more stable in the future when you decide to upgrade your processor. On the other hand, VRAM is a special kind of memory graphics cards use. The amount of VRAM is important for gaming and fast data processing in professional applications. And as mentioned in the previous myth, you need enough VRAM to play games smoothly in higher resolutions and higher graphics settings. Myth 11. The PCI Express version of the motherboard isn't very important. Answer. Both true and false. It's really hard for me to explain this without explaining what PCI Express is. You can think of PCI Express as a highway that connects the graphics cards and SSDs to the PC. The wider this highway, the more data can be transferred, while the PCI Express version indicates the baseline speeds. Terms like X8 and X16 refer to the number of lanes. For example, let's say a graphics card works as expected in the PCI Express 4.0 X8 lane. 
If you were to plug this graphics card into a PCI Express 3.0 X8 slot, you may experience a decrease in performance. Also, the PCI Express version doesn't prevent you from plugging in and using a component, but it might limit the component from reaching its full potential. We experience this the most in M.2 SSDs. For example, let's say you bought an SSD that can go up to 5 gigabytes per second. If you plug this SSD into a PCI Express 3.0 motherboard, your speed may be capped out as low as 3.5 gigabytes per second. On the contrary, if you plug a PCI Express 3.0 SSD into a PCI Express 4.0 motherboard, you will get the maximum speeds the SSD can offer, but you won't gain any additional performance. If this speed cap isn't an issue for you, the PCI Express version may not be all that important to you. Myth 12. I should definitely avoid dead sockets. Answer, both true and false. The term dead socket refers to a CPU socket that will no longer support new processors. If you want to use your PC for a long time, you should avoid dead sockets. For example, someone who bought an AM5 motherboard can upgrade from the Ryzen 7000 series to the 9000 series in the future, meaning that they can upgrade their PC. But if you're on a tight budget, I still think that motherboards with LGA1700 and AM4 sockets can still be worth buying. As their performances are still enough, they won't create any issues in the short run. Just know that there will no longer be any new processors for these sockets. Myth 13. The chipset is very important when picking a motherboard. Answer. Wrong. The designations you see on motherboards, such as B650 and X670, refer to the chipset. They indicate the features the motherboard offers. Chipsets can vary as they differ from generation to generation and they aren't crucial. Usually, they differ in aspects such as VRM quality, PCI Express version, and the number of ports and slots. However, choosing a motherboard solely based on the chipset is not the right approach. There can be major differences between different motherboards with the same chipset due to the manufacturer. Because of this, you should check the motherboard's features and if it fits your needs. All right, let's finish the video slowly. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button. If not, feel free to dislike. Stay mysterious until the next video. Take care and bye.